Good morning. We're preparing this message for Sunday. Uh, this will be for uh, November 22nd. And uh, if you can't be at service, uh, if you're shut in, sick, or you don't, you feel uncomfortable going to a meeting, this me this video is for you. And then if you're attending the services and you'd like to get another message, this is for you also. Uh, we want to remind you, uh, we're all we're doing right now is Sunday worship, 9:30, and prayer meeting Tuesday night. As long as we can, we'll see how it goes. There's supposed to be a surgeon outbreak right now we'll just take it one week at a time and so keep us in prayer uh, we're going to go into our bible study in just a moment i want to blow the shofar and then we'll have our prayer our lord we thank you for this day we thank you lord for the opportunity to again uh, go into your word especially the old testament the some of the highlights of the Old Testament, these stories that we've read, we've heard, but maybe we don't understand quite in detail. And so Lord, we ask you to, by your spirit, teach us, lead us, and guide us as we learn and grow together. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So we're gonna go to Genesis chapter 11, and uh, today we're dealing with the story of the Tower of Babel, and a lot of people uh, they, they read this, they, they hear messages, and maybe don't get quite all the information, the details from the Word of God, what God is saying to us today. What is this story? Uh, these Old Testament uh, accounts speak to us today and give us instruction for our day. So let's, let's look at uh, Genesis chapter 11, and a little intro here. After the flood of Genesis chapter 7 with Noah and his sons and grandsons after they settled on dry ground and offered sacrifice to the Lord then they're, they're, these family the, Noah's family his sons and his grandsons started to spread out over the known uh, earth at that time they went north and west to the areas of modern day Greece and north and east to cover Turkey and southern Russia uh, some went up into Russia, um, in, in, uh, even, even Russian historians claim that the, the grandsons of Noah, uh, Meshach and Tubal, uh, are the founders of Moscow and Tobolsk, and, and uh, so uh, that's, that's from Russian history. Uh, they, went, uh, they went south, they went to, uh, toward the, the shores of the Caspian Sea, they went uh, towards east, towards Persia, Assyria, Iraq, back toward Jordan, down into Saudi Arabia, west to North Africa. Some of uh, the grandsons settled in the Sinai, Egypt, and Libya. And being a fam of the same family and the same bloodline, they all spoke the same language. Uh, some of them went east and settled in the plain of Shinar, or Sumar, Sumer, uh, in modern day Iraq, in that, in that fertile, fertile crescent area of the old um, Mesopotamia, they made bricks of asphalt, or uh, bricks and used asphalt or tar. In that area, there's a lot of oil and a lot of tar. They didn't use stone, they, used, they made their own bricks and they used asphalt as the mortar. And they said, let us build a city and a tower and let us make a name for ourselves. So let's, let's read this portion of scripture, uh, Genesis 11, one through nine. Now the whole earth had one language and one speech, and it came to pass as they journeyed from the east, they found the plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said to one another, come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and they had asphalt for mortar. And they said, come, let us build for ourselves a city. And many Bible scholars believe that city was Babylon. Uh, and they, they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. And let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad all over the face of the earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. 
And the Lord said, indeed, the people, their uh, people are one. They have all one language. And this is what they have begun to do. Now, now nothing that they had proposed to do will be withheld from them. And so God was upset because of what they had proposed to do. They decided to build a tower that reached up into the heavens and a tower uh, in honor of themselves. Now, these towers were also built as pagan temples. And we'll see in just a moment. Uh, come, let us go down. God says, come, let us go down there and confuse their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord confused their language and verse eight says, and the Lord scattered them abroad from there all over the face of the earth and they ceased building the city. Therefore, the name is called Babel because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. So they... They built these towers and they used, uh, they made their own bricks and they used asphalt for the mortars because that was plentiful in that area. And these were the descendants of Noah. They had come, they've come out of the ark. They were offering sacrifice to God. They were worshiping the Lord. And then what happens? Mankind disintegrates again into pagan worship. And the tower they built was likely, uh, this is a picture, a drawing. The tower they built was likely one of these, uh, they called ziggurats. And a ziggurat was uh, used in, in pagan worship. Isn't it interesting? I'll put it closer to the camera. Isn't it interesting that the ziggurat looks a lot like the, the, uh, the pyramids uh, in, in Mexico and South America, the Aztec and the Incas and the Mayans. Uh, places of worship, a pagan worship. And so these, ta these towers, and notice uh, the, the base was huge. It wasn't like the Leaning Tower of Pisa that didn't have enough uh, uh, foundation. The, the, the foundation of a ziggurat was the length of the height they were gonna go to. Let me explain. So if they were gonna build a tower 300 feet tall, they would build the base in one direction alone would be 300 feet, giving it a, a very firm foundation, guaranteeing that this tower would stand for years. And if, uh, you, if you do some historical study or archeological study, you'll see that in Iraq and Iran, there are still ruins of these towers that were built thousands of years ago. So they are, they are structures that there's still a the trace of them around. Some of them have the top layers disintegrated, uh, but the rest of the tower is still there. Um, so they descended from Noah, but they reverted to paganism. And the tower was built like the cigarette. Uh, it is similar to pagan worship, but this one, this one was to honor man. It was almost uh, like the worship of man, the worship of mankind. And God is very displeased with this. Um, let's go to James chapter 4. And in and, and, uh, James chapter 4, verse 6, it says he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. The, these people in Babel were being proud and saying, look what we can do. We built this great city. Now we're going to build a tower to ourselves. We're going we're gonna to gain recognition by this tower we have built. And in the book of James says, God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. Man is not supposed to lift himself up. If we are promoted or lifted up at all, it needs to come from the Lord. Promotion needs to come from the Lord and all the glory needs to go to the Lord. We, we shouldn't be going around saying, look what I've done. Uh, all the glory needs to be given to the Lord. 
Uh, so Noah's grand, Noah's sons and grandsons and grand and and daughters and in laws and so on, they all uh, reverted to paganism. So the Lord says, "I'm going to confuse their language and scatter them," and that's exactly what the Lord did. They wanted this monument. Uh, it was a monument to human effort. Look what we can do. And it was then, but instead of it becoming a monument to human effort, whenever throughout history, when everybody, anyone talks about the Tower of Babel, we understand there's a judgment that came with it. And so instead of a monument to human effort, it became a monument to God's judgment upon mankind uh, because of pride, self pride, human pride, and self rule. Uh, mankind was saying, look what we've done. We built this city. We built this tower. Look at our accomplishments. And they weren't thanking the Lord. They weren't worshiping him. So this tower, they believed the Tower of Babel stood as high as 300 feet. And it was the focal point of the city. It was the, the one thing that stood out in the city, could be seen from all parts. And they built the tower as a monument to their own greatness, something for the whole world to see. Uh, and that's, that's really uh, sad. Uh, they were saying, look at us. We want the whole world to see what we have done. So the Tower of Babel was a great human achievement and a wonder of the ancient world at that time, but it was a monument to the people themselves rather than to God. What about us? The, so the question comes up, what about us? What monuments do we build to ourselves? Think about the day in which we live. There are people that try to stand out by wearing very expensive clothes, uh, jewelry, uh, uh, got to have a Rolex watch that costs thousands of dollars and things of that sort. Uh, big fancy houses, uh, thousands and thousands of square feet, uh, uh, fancy cars. Uh, I was behind a, a Ferrari the other day here in town and and uh, an old gentleman was driving it and he could hardly shift the gears, but, but he had a Ferrari and he wanted everybody to know it. Uh, uh, this is not what it's all about. The, if, if these are the things that give us identity, if these are, these are, the, are these the things uh, that, that make us stand out in society, are we promoting ourselves? Uh, so clothes, jewelry, big, big houses, fancy cars, important jobs. Some people, it's their job that becomes a focal point and a thing of self-worship. Things that draw attention to our achievements and, and to ourselves, but not thanking God. Uh, you know, so important. And, and the Lord will not deny you success. The Lord, the Lord will not deny you uh, uh, things that you like. Uh, sometimes we think, well, the Lord will only give me what I need, but he'll give you things that you like also. But will you thank him for those things? Or you, will you take credit and say, look what I've got? Uh, so the things I mentioned may not be wrong in themselves, but when we use them to give us identity and self-worth and, and they take the place of God in our lives, then they're wrong. We are free to develop in areas of our life and, but we're not free to think we have replaced God or we're not th free to think, look what I've done because stop and think, we can't take an, our next breath without the Lord. Uh, so we have to give him glory, give him credit. So <clears throat> the question in this lesson that we can apply today is what towers have you built in your life? So a lot of times we read these Old Testament stories and go, oh, that's a cool story, but how does it apply to me today? And this tells you uh, what towers have we built in our life. And the, the location of this city was in the, between the Tigris and Euphrates River, that fertile crescent, uh, the city of Babel or Babylon. Its tower had reached to the heavens. And the word Babel, the word Babel comes from a Hebrew verb, which means to mix or confuse. So that's where that name comes from. That's a Hebrew word that means to mix or confuse. Most scholars think the city of Babel to be Babylon in Iraq. And Babylon is the evil city that persecutes God's people. And you go to 
Revelation chapter 17 uh, talks about mystery Babylon the Great. Uh, in the end times, a city will be raised up again and called Mystery Babylon the Great. And this city will be influenced and controlled by the Antichrist. And from that city, uh, there will be great persecution. And, um, and, and God blames that city for the death of martyrs. Um, look at uh, Revelation 17 and verse 5. It says, On her forehead a name was written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, and of the abominations of the earth. And I saw a woman drunk with the blood of the saints and the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. Now, this city is going to be the, 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 the headquarters uh, of the, the, the beast and the false prophet, and especially the religious center that demands worship of the Antichrist. And when anyone during the tribulation period, uh, remember that the tr trumpet sounds, the rapture takes place, and the church, the believers in Christ now, rise to meet the Lord in the air. But those that remain on the earth, if they become a believer during that tribulation period, they will be martyred because the Antichrist and the false prophet demand uh, worship to the Antichrist. And, and really, it's, it's devil worship because halfway through the tribulation period, uh, the Antichrist receives a mortal wound. He's a, this is a man receives a mortal wound and is resurrected by Satan himself and indwelt by the devil. So when the false prophet is demanding that people worship the Antichrist, it's actually ask, asking the people of earth to worship the devil. And uh, so that's the, the, that's the crux of it all. And this, and this uh, city is the city that will be responsible for the martyrdom of those that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. We see here why there's so many ang uh, languages, languages on the face of the earth today. Instead of, why aren't all mankind speaking the same language? Because, because they got proud, started to make a monument for themselves. Right now today, a lot of people don't realize this, but to, at this hour, there are uh, approximately 6,500 languages being spoken on the face of the earth. It's amazing. Some, some countries have dozens of languages. Uh, I believe it was Bolivia we were talking about the other day. has dozens and dozens of languages within that one little country. So why is the human race spread so rapidly across the earth after the flood? Um, the, the, the t after the Tower of Babel, we see the, the spread of, of mankind, a scattering of mankind, we see the genealogies or the generations uh, after the tower in the different locations they went out to and so on. The Tower of Babel. Uh, from the Tower of Babel, the next significant event is God calling Abraham or Abram, who became Abraham. Uh, he was born five generations after the Tower of Babel. So. This man, this pagan man, living in the city of Ur of the Chaldeans, is born five generations after the Tower of Babel, and God's redemptive plan begins. God begins to call Abraham and establish this bloodline from which King David would come, and his descendant, Jesus, the Messiah, would come to planet Earth. And so, so is the transition from the Tower of Babel to God's redemption process for mankind five generations later. And we see uh, the reduction in man's lifespan also uh, from Noah's 950 years life to Abraham 175 years. So God, God would, said he would not let man continue to live that long. So we see the lifespan of mankind reducing in, in just a, a, a few centuries there. So from the judgment of the flood God's, and God saving Noah and his remnant, 10 generations later, God began his salvation plan. So it's 10, 10 generations after the flood 
God calls Abram, and who becomes Abraham, and he from his bloodline comes King David and ultimately Jesus, the Messiah. Abraham was dwelling in Ur of the Chaldeans. Ur is below uh, Babylon, closer to the Persian Gulf, uh, there in, in the area of Iraq today. Um, the most important thing, and, and, and this lesson may be a little shorter today than what we normally have, but I want to focus on this lesson. Um, are, we, are, 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 we, are we doing what God wants us to do? Are we giving him all the glory? Are we giving him credit for every blessing in our life? We're, we're preparing this next week as Thanksgiving, and really Thanksgiving should be every day, not not just a Thursday in November. Thanksgiving should be every day because if we practice Thanksgiving every day, then we're not going to get into the sin as the people of Babel did. We're going we're to give God all the glory. We're going to give him all the credit. We're going to give him all the thanks for the blessings in our life. We're not going to take credit for ourselves. Are we ignoring God and building towers to ourselves? Many say, well, I have to build an inheritance for for my children. I have to leave them money, land, or, or a company so that they can go on. Uh, are we doing it for them or are we making a name for ourselves? Are we trying to make a name for ourselves, a tower for ourselves? The truth is, the more you leave them, the less they will depend upon the Lord. So leaving your children millions of dollars is not the answer. Uh, they're going to depend less on God and more on on their fortunes and so on. The most important inheritance, and as we get ready to pray, the most important inheritance, the most important legacy that we can leave our children is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's nothing more important, no greater treasure than to leave them the message of the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ. So as we... Uh, Take a look at this ziggurat again and, and equate that with any towers you might be building in your life, anything that will bring glory to you and not bring glory to God. Tear them down, tear them down. Don't let anything in your life become a tower uh, to self, a tower uh, to glorify self. Let's go to prayer. Our Lord Jesus, we humble ourselves before you and we ask you, Lord, to forgive us for any towers we've built we ask you, Lord Jesus, to, to just continue to, to display mercy in our lives. And we thank you, Lord, for giving. We thank you, Lord, supplying our every need. We thank you, Lord, uh, for giving us extra things that we don't even need. And you bless us. You give us gifts. You supply our every need, but you also give us gifts. And we give you thanks, Lord. And we give you all the credit, all the glory, all the honor, and all the thanksgiving. So, Lord, as we prepare this National Day of Thanksgiving, we, Lord, remind us daily to give thanks to you and all glory to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. Don't forget, worship 930. If you're, if you're not feeling well or you feel like you're, uh, uh, you have a compromise in your body and you don't want to be with a group, we understand. So watch the videos. Be sure and watch the videos on Sunday and Wednesday. God bless you. Thank you.